I've been messing around with liquid cultures. For instance, we did a video on our albino cordyceps and I've basically just been creating bigger master cultures of all of my little uh, liquid cultures that I have in my fridge. Another one that we've been working on that I'm honestly, I'm a little embarrassed to share with you because I'm a little bummed out about it is we've been working, I did, I've been working on a button mushroom project with you. I love button mushrooms. I eat button mushrooms almost every night of my life. And I was, I was super excited to start a whole button mushroom project on this channel with you. And the flipping things are just, are taken absolutely forever. So these are the grain jars that we made in, in a still air box. That was long before I even had special equipment like that laminar flow hood up there. These were the grain jars that we made in the steel air box. And I don't know, I guess you'd have to go back and look on the channel, but I think that was like almost two months ago because the button mushrooms in this grain jar that we built on the videos were taking so long and I thought that the project was doomed to fail. I ordered another strain of portobello mushrooms from a place that wasn't Amazon from an actual mycology lab. And I decided to, that I would try another set of grain jars on my own, as well as, you know, build sort of a master liquid culture. That's what this is right here. I basically turned my little 10 uh, cc syringe of, uh, of the Portobello liquid culture that I had originally got. I turned that into whatever amount of milliliters is in here. Um, I'll have to go through on the channel sometime about making these like master liquid cultures. It's really easy. It's basically two little tiny scoops of you know a little a little bit of food in there then you pressure cook it and you've got yourself a master liquid culture brewing up i don't know if you can see that but the thing that's kind of bumming me out about this is it's not actually bumming me out it's getting me kind of excited to realize that it was just the amazon strain the amazon syringe that i had got to inject these grain jars that took you know so flipping forever it's kind of cool. At least this is growing so we can still test it out and that project isn't a failure. It's just taken a long time. But for me personally, I'm realizing that um, that, that particular syringe for whatever reason was just super slow growing. I have kind of learned, uh, I've noticed that across different strains of mushrooms and things like that. Say you've got a portobello and a chestnut mushroom or an oyster mushroom or something like that. It's not necessarily the fact that it's not necessarily, you know, each of those mushrooms together. Does that make any, it, no, that doesn't make any sense. With mushrooms, it's a little bit different because from what I've noticed anyways, you know, in our button mushroom example, the button mushroom culture that I got from Amazon has taken, I don't know, months, two, maybe even three months to grow in these, in these jars. And the strain that I got from another place, the same, you know, same thing, portobello mushrooms, all of that, not only is this liquid culture just like taken off, just like a regular mushroom liquid culture should, but this grain jar right here, I don't know if you can see that, this grain jar right here, also portobello mushroom, um, the one that I got from the other syringe, this has been like, I don't know, less than a week, <laughs> and I'm already seeing a ton of growth right there on the top. So I, I've just been sitting here in the morning, uh, lately anyways, because this is what I've been working on and just going through all of my liquid cultures. And basically I've been putting them on their little stir plate, clicking her on, and then just kind of letting them, you know, stir up for a while. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I just will kind of stare at it and think about things and maybe, uh, where's my tea? Take a sip of my tea. Hold on. Oh, this is like a Taiwanese um, milk tea. I actually haven't done anything like milk or tea related on my channel. We do have some cordyceps, a cordyceps project that I've got going on right over there um, that isn't complete yet. I'm going to talk about that in just a second because I'm a little bit, I'm a little paranoid about the cordyceps uh, project to be honest with you, but it's the first time I've ever tried to grow them or anything like that. Nonetheless, if we are successful with the cordyceps, uh, then maybe we'll try making some tea or something. Maybe we'll do something like that with those on this channel because I've heard that you can do, I've heard that you can make like tea out of it. I've heard you can make soup with cordyceps. I've heard that you can, um, you know, just pop them in your mouth and eat them as a snack or whatever. 
So I also might as well take the opportunity to update you on the cordyceps project that we've got going on right over there on that shelf. So I don't know how well you're going to be able to see and I don't know I don't know if any of this is good or bad or nonetheless all sorts of weird and crazy things have been going on. So for instance there was almost immediately these little like black patches. I wish I could open this and like show you in there, but I can't. I haven't even opened it myself at all. Uh, so everything's nice and sealed up. But anyways, there's these little like black patches that just started like growing all over the place. So I don't know if that's mold or what's going on in here. But every one of, uh, every one of these tubs has these little black uh, patches kind of growing in there. And I don't know, they're all kind of looking a little different, to be honest with you. I'm paranoid about all of them. This one's got some like juicy yellow stuff. This one looks like pretty clean and good. This one is like turning really red, which I'm assuming this is the Hades version of the cordyceps. So I think that's kind of like a good sign maybe. Um, this one right here is the one I'm most paranoid about because it kind of like, it kind of smells. Let me show you. To be honest with you, I went through a phase where I was like, Every, this is all contaminated. I, I, it's every single tub is contaminated. I did every single thing wrong. The negativity was creeping in for at least a whole day until I decided that who cares? It's just cordyceps. And if they've all failed, whatever. You know, I'll just have to come on and I'll have to put my tail between my legs and admit that they all failed. That was kind of the point of the project anyways, right? To see if, if all of it worked. Nonetheless, I've kind of got a little bit of my my courage back and I've, you know, I said, whatever, I've been waiting to see what's happening anyways. When I do actually peek in here really close, let me see if I can get a shot of me peeking in as well as, you know, kind of give you a little peek in there. Is that a good one? This one right here on the top, it has like a funk to it. So if I get like right up to the, right up to the air vent, <clears throat> Whew, to be honest with you, it's gone down a lot. It's gone down quite a bit, but it originally had like, I don't know, it's almost like a sweet kind of vinegary smell or something like that coming out of it. And the only reason I think, well, I think that's kind of weird because I've always heard that if you, if you get any sort of smells, it's kind of like a bad sign of contamination. So from the little bit of research that I've done and I've been trying not to get all like web MD and obsessed with it or anything like that, it kind of sounds maybe like it might be like a bacterial issue or something like that. And in combination with all of these little like juice pockets and stuff in there, I've been thinking, I don't know, maybe it's something weird. And the only other reason I think that's kind of weird is because the other ones, if I get right up on them, they don't really have any smell at all. Like this one definitely doesn't have any smell. That one definitely doesn't have any smell. So that one has a little bit of like, it's actually gone down quite a bit and it doesn't have like as much of a, as much of a strong <laughs> aroma coming up and like giving it a little smell. Even now it does, it kind of does have this like, almost like this sweet like stink to it. So if I'm worried about any of them, I'm worried about this one, but to be honest with you, I'm worried about all of these, I'm worried about all of these Cordyceps projects because I don't know, maybe it's just the beginner in me. I've been expanding my, my 10 cc little syringes that I've been you know, acquiring for these like cordyceps and all the different strings that I've got. I've been expanding those into bigger liquid cultures. Um, number one, just so I can kind of like, you know, store all of these away. And number two, just, you know, so, so I have more liquid cultures so that when I start a grain jar, I can take it and I can squirt like 10 cc's instead of just like one cc and maybe that'll make it grow faster and I don't know. Overall, it's just, it's always kind of nice when you have like, when you get to that point, ooh, well, the plant lights are turning on. It's always kind of nice when you get to that point um, where you're comfortable enough with something where you just kind of, well, the light looks so much light nicer when it's all like actually bright in here. Um, what was I saying? It's always nice when you get to a point in, in a hobby like mycology or whatever you're doing where you're just like, you're so comfortable with it that you, you kind of, you know, you've got an abundance and you're not so, you're not so specific. You don't really care about measuring every little detail out. It feels good when you get to that point where you're just not so stingy with, with all of your resources and things like that. I guess that's what I'm trying to say.